What is good? What is up? It's Jordan or Texans Thoughts and I'm back with another Texans Film Breakdown. Today, we're going to be looking at Darren Fell's 2019 season and shout outs to those who recommended him right after the film. Fells is just the definition of a solid player. Obviously, his biggest impact is made in the red zone, hauling in an NFL leading 7 touchdowns. But is he more than that, or is that all he really is? We'll see in this video. So if you enjoy, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. Also, last time I'm saying this, but if you want to have input on what type of content you'll see in this channel, fill out a quick survey I made for y'all. It'll only take a couple minutes, and the link will be in the description. Now, let's break down the film of Darren Fells because the film don't lie. So like I said, Fells led all tight ends in the NFL with 7 touchdowns, and he was a major reason for our improved red zone efficiency from 2018. We jumped from 29th to 9th, and with us losing DeAndre Hopkins who led the team in red zone target share at 21%, you would think that Fells could get a large share of those targets. He was tied for the third highest target share with Will Fuller at 16%, and we would be wise to use his size mismatch as much as possible. I'm just going in chronological order of when he scored his touchdowns here, but it lines up perfectly with what I'm saying because you can really see how his length and wingspan make him tough to guard. Watson gives him a perfect throw here, high and away from the linebacker, who, you know, he's not in awful position, but a perfect throw will always be perfect coverage. And Watson has always been great at throwing jump balls, look at his time back at Clemson, and he's just so good at exploiting that size advantage. And because of that size, you just can't put a safety on Fells in the red zone. He'll just play bully ball and there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing special about the route, he literally just runs straight, but because of his height at 6'7 and his super long arms, he can catch balls that no other defender has any chance of getting to. He just looks like your older brother holding the last cookie above your head like, nah, nah, this is mine. Poor Falcons defender, man. We've all been there, don't worry. It's no mistake why Fells had the most touchdowns of his career with Watson. He never had more than three before. Watson's ball placement is on point, but the threat of his legs definitely makes Fells' job easier. Fells plays this one smart, though. We've got him and Akins running into the flat, and instead of Fells just stopping his route off at the goal line, he continues it upfield, knowing that 9 out of 10 times, defenders are undisciplined and will go after the quarterback, leaving him just wide open for the easiest touchdown of his life. Talking about Watson and his legs, and I really just wouldn't be doing him justice unless we looked at this legendary play. When things look bad, Fells is covered, Watson is getting harassed, thanks Chris Clark. It doesn't matter, Watson will always rise to the occasion and make something happen, and that's exactly what he does right here. Kicked in the eye, no problem. Can't see, no problem. Need a perfect throw, no problem. Deshaun Watson is here. Now let's talk about this ball placement too. It's high, and yeah, it could be a little bit more out in front, but... I'm gonna give Watson some slack for throwing this with one eye. However, the throw works because it's high up. The linebacker can't catch it. He can't get to it. Watson couldn't make this same throw to any other receiver on the team. Only Fells has the length and the reach to make that catch. The next two touchdowns he had were from good play calling. Here's a typical RPO that we always run and I won't really get into the nitty gritty of it because I have an entire section dedicated for RPO stuff. Now his last touchdown he had was out of this nice pistol full house look against the Patriots and I really hope we get to see more of this look. It's tough to match up against when you've got this many guys in the backfield and the play design is really nice. Essentially these two routes are trying to clear out this side of the field and open up a hole for Fell. These DBs are in man and run with their guys, so when the defender is caught sleeping because of the fake, Fells gets a step on him and that's all it takes because these guys, they're not going to turn their heads back around and he's into the end zone. Alright, so moving on, Fells saw most of his production from the RPO game last year, especially early in the season when we were able to take advantage of slow linebackers. Slow physically, but also slow mentally because this play that we run, it's not really anything super complex or creative, but you do have to be able to read it quickly. So, Fells will line up in the backfield as an H-back and will fake the run in one direction and Fells will run out to block in the other direction. And what makes this play difficult to guard is that our base run, our most common run, looks exactly the same as the setup and the H-back works as a kickout block to block this unblocked edge defender. However, on our RPOs, Fells fakes the block and just runs out into the flat instead, putting the defense in a compromising position on who to choose to guard. Defenses have to communicate well or else it's an easy completion every time. So now let's break down the reads of this play. So whichever direction Fells is running, we're going to have that side's defensive end unblocked. So the first part is just like a read option. If this edge defender crashes down, Watson pulls it. 
But if he stays disciplined, then you just have to hand it off because you now have a numbers advantage. So at the mesh point, Watson is looking for even the slightest movement downfield by this edge. And while he doesn't completely just run downfield towards Carlos Hyde, he does move enough downfield for Watson to want to keep the ball. Now, the next read is the linebacker to that same side of the unblocked edge defender. If he's too far from Fells, it's an easy dump off. But if he's covering Fells, then Watson can just take off with the ball himself. And the Chiefs linebackers were horrible at making these simple reads and staying disciplined. The linebacker constantly let Fells win the edge and was rarely in position to stop him, so he feasted on that same play all day long. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Arguably, Fell's most clutch play of the season came at the end of the Raiders game when they finally played it well, but it didn't matter. The edge defender actually chips Fells to slow him down and makes it easier for the safety to go out and cover him. Watson makes the right read, that pass to Fells isn't open, so he takes off. And at this point, things look bleak, but again we see the threat of Watson's legs gets Fells open, who does a good job to social distance himself from the safety and open up a throwing window for Watson. Now those plays were all effective in the first half of the season, but when we went up against smart and disciplined defenses, we were completely shut down. Like I said, it's not a hard play to stop, all it really takes is for this linebacker or safety to see Fells coming and not let him get the edge. And look, defenses make plays all the time, I'm not trying to fault Fells for this, but the Texans offense needs to be better about finding a counter for when defenses figure us out. Over the weeks, we just kept trying that same play and it didn't work. So now, I will shut on Fells because it's great that he was productive early on, but it's not like he's doing anything that special on these plays, he's just running and catching the ball. Whenever Aikens would play in this role in the RPO, he would get way more yak and just be a more dynamic threat. So now I want to talk about Fells blocking. <sighs> It was good for the first 6 or so games, he could make nice 1 on 1 blocks on a defensive end, and occasionally even block a linebacker at the second level. He was definitely the best blocking tight end on the team, don't get me wrong, but that's a very low bar. And even within those 6 games, he was just too inconsistent for my liking. He's been a blocking tight end his entire career, that's his reputation, but players shouldn't get to just live off the reputation forever. Your product on the field has got to take precedent over what you used to be able to do. He's getting up there in age, 34 now, and he's just not the same blocker he used to be, and it's not fair to expect that he would be. There's just some plays that he can't athletically make anymore. He's not as strong as he used to be, he's not as quick as he used to be, and that resulted in quite a few ugly blocks. And unfortunately, it only got worse throughout the season. About halfway through the Colts game, it just dropped off a cliff. I thought he got injured, but I couldn't find anything about that, and I don't know if it was just it just wasn't too bad, it was a minor injury, so he played through it or what, but it definitely affected him and he looked like a completely different player. Something happened. I don't know what it was, but something definitely happened because it was night and day. He wasn't as technically sound with good hand placement or leverage like he was earlier. And then a couple weeks later, when he would try and use his hands correctly again, he would just whiff on blocks. He didn't look coordinated out there, and he was being tossed aside by every defender in his way. And I bring this all up because he should not be getting tight end one snaps over Jordan Aikens. If neither of them are blocking, then put Aikens on the field at least, because he's a receiving threat that you don't just have to scheme open through RPOs like Fells. Now, the next bone I have to pick with Fells is his drops. It's really annoying because, you know, he's not that athletic of a dude, he's more of a blocking possession tight end, right? That's been his, his reputation throughout his career, and even last year he had a catch rate of 92%, but then this year it went down to 71%, which, you know, that's around his career average. And it wasn't like he couldn't win contested catches, he just struggled with the easy ones. Just concentration drops that are completely avoidable. And, you know, I get that players have drops and aren't going to catch everything, but it's the timing of when they happened. He had some bad drops in key moments of big time games, especially in the playoffs. He just straight up choked sometimes. And it's simple drops like these that can be extremely demoralizing for an offense. It can completely swing the momentum for a team. Just think about the beginning of the Chiefs game when they couldn't catch anything. They couldn't get a rhythm, but eventually, they started catching the ball, and well, we know the rest. And please don't click off, I I'm done talking about the tragedy, I, I promise. <laughs> but these were just frustrating, man, and I hope he can be more dependable for us this season. And so the last thing I want to touch on just really quickly is his route running. You know, very few tight ends are good route runners, so it's really not a huge knock on him. But let me ask you this, if he's not going to be a good blocker, and if he's not going to get open, what is he doing on the football field? He's just eating up snaps for Aikens or not allowing us to see the potential in Waring or Thomas. 
And Fels is just particularly poor at creating separation. He's always tried to be physical and push off at the top of his routes, but he's just not that good at it. I wish there was a stat for it, but majority of Fels' production, which was a good 341 yards, came from the RPO game. He needed to be schemed open, and any tight end could have played that role. We saw it. It wasn't very hard. So that's going to do it for my Darren Fells film breakdown. And thank you to those who recommended I make this video. So shout out Lil Kane Says, Mr. Mr. Reptiles and More Reptiles, Israel Penaflor, Philip Villarreal, and Bryce Celestine. I really appreciate y'all's support and love interacting with y'all in the comments. I'm always going to keep it real with y'all and just break down what I see on film and bring that to y'all. I'll admit, I'm not a huge Fells fan if you couldn't tell already, but if he can get back to being a solid blocker and continue to use his size and connect with Watson in the red zone, all those drops and bad routes, they won't frustrate me as much. So if you enjoyed the video, please do hit that like button, subscribe for more content, and comment down below your thoughts on the video. If you're still listening, you're a real one, I appreciate you, and the question of the day is... What do you think the final tight end room will look like going into the season? Who's getting cut? Let me know. Also, this is your last reminder to fill out the survey I made for y'all. You can roast me and tell me everything I'm doing wrong. You can tell me what type of content you want to see during the season. I'm all ears. Also, we at Texans Unfiltered have a great website where I write articles and a weekly podcast as well. So if you're itching for more Texans content, we got you. The links will be in the description. All right, this was Jordan or Texans Thoughts. Hope you enjoyed and come back for more. Take care, everyone, and remember, the film don't lie.